Yo, what's going on guys? So the time's finally here. We're going to OBD1. I finally got everything together and I found something in the car and I'm gonna check it right now, but I'm pretty sure I found out why it's running so lean. Um, basically, we're actually running high impedance injectors. They're actually OBD2 injectors. The previous owner or somebody spliced in OBD2 high impedance injectors and left the resistor box. That's right, they left the resistor box in there. So I'm thinking that's gonna be the reason, but we're gonna diagnose that further. Um, for right now, I'm gonna just kinda inform you guys on how to do a conversion from OBD0 to OBD1. It's very simple. All you need is most of the stuff that you have in front of here, not even all of it, just some of it. So if you have an OBD01 car and you wanna go OBD1, you're gonna need a computer. I can't tell you exactly which computer is gonna run best for your engine application, but what I can tell you is that Google's your best friend. If you have a stock engine, you can literally go on Google and type in your engine and then say, what computer is best for my car? It'll tell you what you need. Like if you have an LS, you're gonna want P75. If you have a GSR, you're gonna want a P72. If you have a Z6, you're gonna want a P28. Any P uh, or any OBD1 ECU will work. Um, most of them are interchangeable and most of them you can actually convert and then you can chip and put other base maps and it just it gets crazy so basically you just need an obd1 computer but if you have a stock engine and you're going to keep the computer stock make sure you get the right one or else your your car will run like absolute crap i'm telling you right now um mine is a p61 this is for b17 but it doesn't matter because i have Honda, so i can literally chip this and make it a P28 if I wanted to, or an ITR computer, it doesn't matter. So for your application, make sure you get the right computer and do some research. Uh, we are gonna be doing LS, or not LS, we're gonna be doing a B20 VTEC build in the future, which is why I'm going Honda. Otherwise I would have got a PR4 um, or equivalent to run the stock B20 that's currently in the car. Anyway, from there you're gonna need a jumper harness to be able to connect it to your existing uh, harness for your car. Um, these run you about $21 on Amazon and eBay right now. It comes with the adapter itself, and then it comes with that extra loom to wire any extras that your car and computer support, such as VTEC, knock sensor, etc., etc. Um, from there, you're going to want a OBD1 distributor. You cannot use the OBD0 distributor, it will not work. The internals are totally different, so don't even try it get an obd1 distributor they're not that bad they're like 40 bucks so your local pick apart you might be able to find it cheaper on ebay and stuff then you're going to need a way to hook that up to your existing harness without hacking stuff up you can hack it all up and just splice the wires in but i really don't recommend that you guys do that that's terrible anyway i made this myself there's a video on my channel on how to do it yourself so i'll put an annotation for you guys it'll save you some money but if you don't have the time and you don't want to go through the trouble of doing it you can buy this off of Amazon and eBay as well. It comes with both of these. They're around about $16 to $20. So you're going to need that. And then you don't need OBD1 injectors. Um, this is kind of complicated, so just bear with me. So there's two kinds of Honda injectors. OBD0 are low impedance injectors and OBD1 are high impedance injectors. Basically, there's some circuitry and some voltage differences between the two. And... All I can tell you is that if you have low impedance injectors, you're gonna need the resistor box. Do not run OBD0 injectors or any low impedance injectors without a resistor box. You will fry your computer. Don't do it. Um, if you are running OBD1 injectors, you don't need it. Don't run it because the following, you'll see in a second what will happen to you if you run OBD1 injectors with a resistor box. Your car will run like absolute crap and you will blow your motor, so don't do it. OBD1, no resistor box. OBD0, make sure to have a resistor box. And in order to delete the resistor box or OBD1, if you go that route, all you have to do is cut this little harness here and throw that away or do whatever you want. And then you basically just connect all five cables together, solder them, tape them, glue them, whatever you got to do, and then just reconnect this where it normally would plug into. So literally cut and put all five together. Simple as that. That's how you delete it. But do not run OBD1 injectors with a resistor box, okay? Or vice versa. So OBD0, run it. 
obd one don't run it. So simple as that. For me, my application is a little weird. Like I just said, I have OBD2 injectors, so I do not need to run a resistor box. And the car actually currently had one in it. And yeah, you'll see in a minute what I'm talking about. But basically, if you're not sure what kind of injectors you have, all you have to do is grab the injector. It doesn't even have to be in the car. And you gotta check the ohms, the resistance basically between those two leads. So get a multimeter, put it on ohms, and then just, doesn't matter which way, just put any lead uh, to each one of these and it's gonna give you a reading. If you get like a two to a four, you have low impedance injectors. So run the resistor box. If you have a reading of 12, you have high impedance injectors, delete the resistor box, simple as that. This here is meant to represent an O2 sensor, a heated O2 sensor, a four wire O2 sensor, if you want to call it that. As you can see, it's missing from the end from there. This is just a connector to it. If you're going to be running a stock computer, I really recommend that you get a four wire O2 sensor and wire it to your car. Because if you don't, it's going to be running like crap. You're going to have horrible emissions and just don't do it. Get yourself a heated O2 sensor. You can find these off of more uh, most OBD1 cars. Um, in your local pick apart um, or you can buy one off of eBay and stuff so definitely do that I'm not gonna be doing it which is why it's missing from there because I have a wideband installed and I'm gonna be tuning and I don't want the oxygen sensor to be messing with the tune while I'm trying to tune it so I'm literally gonna be in a closed loop no open loop um, so if you're tuning you don't need it it's optional but if you're not tuning definitely get yourself one of those so anyway let me go ahead and show you what I found on the car okay so for those of you who watch my videos you probably know that I'm having an issue with this car it is running uh, super lean and I just checked right now um, and it turns out that the previous owner wired in these uh, OBD2 injectors and pigtails and if I check for resistance on them um, I am getting 12 volts across all four, 12.8, 12.7. So these are uh, high impedance injectors or saturated injectors and some people call them. So literally, if you look up here, I'm still running a resistor box. So I don't know how bad that really is for the car, but apparently I was running high impedance injectors with a resistor box and I'm thinking that's what's causing it to go lean because I was doing some research and that could possibly cause the injectors not to stay open long enough, causing a lean condition. So before we do anything else, I'm gonna go ahead and run a little test right now. I'm gonna do the resistor delete box, and then we're gonna fire up the car and see if that improves the um, stoichiometry of it. Okay, so I made this little plug here to delete the resistor box. You literally just take the plug out of that, cut it, um, and then you get all five wires, connect them all together, solder them um, and then shrink wrap them and in this case that's exactly what i did a little bit of uh, dielectric grease and then i also put a little bit of electrical tape on top all right so let's go ahead and fire her up and we're gonna see what's going on with the fuel ratios for the car second see if it uh if it goes back to lean here in a second keep in mind it was running 17 1 oh yeah it's already looking so much better feels better too let's give it a couple little revs better definitely still needs a tune but definitely better I can feel it too in the input of the car there's actually less vibration now oh yeah definitely confirmed but this time already it was like way up in the 18s at one point. So 
we're cruising uh, low 15s, which is right around stoichiometry. Perfect air fuel ratio. So it's definitely confirmed. If you run high impedance injectors, also known as saturated injectors, with a resistor box, you're going to be running really, really lean because what ends up happening is that the injectors aren't able to open for as long as they're supposed to so you're basically firing less fuel and that's causing you to run super lean all right well that settles it as you guys can see confirmed on my channel if you run high impedance injectors with a resistor box you will you will run lean and it will kill your engine slowly but surely anyway now we're going to be uh, ripping out this OBDO ECU. This is a PR4. We're no longer going to be needing this. So I'm going to go ahead and take it out and swapping it with my OBD1 Honda chip. So it's pretty simple, guys. I'm sure you can figure it out. Just remove it any which way you can. There should be some bolts holding it on. And then from there, you're just going to take out all those connectors right there. Pretty simple. I'm sure you guys can do it. So once you get that thing out, you're just going to wire your harness, adapter, jumper harness, whatever you want to call it. That's also very self-explanatory. I'm sure you guys can figure out how to put a couple connectors together. And then from there, we're going to put the ECU in. So let's do that. P61. Uh, this is a B17 computer for a second gen GSR. It's kind of rare. Um, if you don't know what a P61 has, it has... Uh, it's basically a P28 equivalent, so it comes with VTEC, but it also comes with a knock sensor. So that's kind of interesting. You kind of get everything in it, which is cool. You don't have to do any conversions or anything like that. Keep in mind, if you are running a VTEC engine with a non-VTEC computer, like a P75, you're going to want to do a conversion to VTEC on the P75. I might do a video explaining how to do that later, but you can find a lot of those tutorials online already. And it's pretty simple. You just solder some uh, circuitry into the board itself and it'll convert it to a VTEC ECU. So in case you were wondering, out with the old, in with the new. Now, as you probably guessed, you just got to install your distributor and then you got to run the adapter plate that goes, or not the adapter plate, but the uh, adapter harness, jumper harness that we made um, or that you possibly purchased. So that's gonna be really simple. Just plug this in. And plug, plug this guy in right here. And then we're gonna do this guy as well. Like that. And then this last other connector here it's kind of hard doing this with one hand but there we go that's all there's to it you can just tuck everything away now bolt it all down and then I highly recommend that you check your timing with a timing light uh, you can run it without doing that but again I highly recommend doing it I'm gonna be doing it right now uh, but that's pretty much all there's to it that's how you convert uh, from here, if you wanted to go OBD1 injectors, you would just uh, take this out and cut all these up and then basically splice in your OBD1 uh, connectors and just basically the yellow wire provides power and the other color wire is like kind of like ground signal, I don't know. But just keep the yellow wire in the same location um, as it is now stock and you should be fine so you just basically keep it on the right side there you can see the right side there and the right side there and then on the right side over there so just keep the yellow wire constant and you should be fine the other colors don't matter whatsoever and then basically you would just install your obd one injectors as well and you would be good to go simple as that and then don't forget if you are going OBD1 injectors, or in my case, OBD2 injectors, basically any high impedance injectors, you have to delete the resistor box. There will be a little box somewhere around here. I've shown it in the past. You guys can go back and look at it. That's what it should look like when you delete the resistor box. It's literally just the connection that goes to the resistor box with all five wires capped together. And that's basically it. If you are going to leave the OBD0 injectors on, leave the resistor box. That's probably the easiest way that you would go about doing this. But 
This is the way that I have to go because I already have OBD2 injectors and they seem to be working perfectly fine. Okay, so, so far you have your OBD1 ECU jump to your engine harness. You have your OBD1 distributor all bolted down and tight and snug. It is also jumped into your engine harness. You figured out whether you have high impedance or low impedance injectors and you deleted or kept your resistor box depending on which ones you have. And that's basically it. You're ready to fire up. Um, before you fire it up, you wanna check to see if your computer is good. The way you do that, make sure you don't start the car yet. Um, just hit the key on the on position and you're gonna look at your dash. You gotta make sure the check engine light turns off. If the check engine light does not turn off and it remains on, you have an issue and you will need to further diagnose it. It could be an electrical issue, it could be the computer itself is bad. So I'll let you diagnose that problem yourself. But make sure that when you hit the, the on position that it turns on and then it turns off. And then if you have Honda data, then you wanna look for the green light coming out of the little hole there. So I'm not gonna fire it up right now because I have Honda data and I don't know what base map it's running. So that will be in the next video for me, but for you, you can go ahead and just turn it on now if you're running a stock computer. So once you fire up your engine for the first time, you're gonna wanna let it warm up and set the ignition timing. I'm not gonna show you how to do that, but a quick Google search will give you tons of information on how to go about setting the ignition time for your specific vehicle. So that's all there's to it. That's how you go from OBD0 to OBD1. I hope you guys learned something in this video. If you have any questions, just leave a comment down below and I'll try to answer accordingly. And thanks for watching.